Hey guys, remember this? Yep, the muzzle flash is back. This time with bigger guns. More carnage. And even bigger surprises. Yes, I know, I already have a muzzle flash tutorial for Adobe After Effects, which you can check out right here. Today, however, we are going to use a different software package altogether. We are going to use HitFilm 2. HitFilm 2 is fairly new. It is an all-in-one solution for indie filmmakers that combines editing and visual effects compositing features in a single software package. The guys at FX Home were kind enough to grant me free access to the ultimate version to create some exciting content for you. And what can be more exciting than a muzzle flash? Now, this is going to be a fairly basic tutorial, but I will assume that you at least understand the basic concepts of creating visual effects. But let's dive straight into HitFilm 2 and create some awesome muzzle flashes. Well, this is what HitFilm 2 looks like. I have a little military-inspired clip here that I filmed for this tutorial. Now, one of the things I really like about HitFilm 2 is that while you can easily use stock footage elements, a lot of the time you don't have to. A lot of the effects available are generated directly inside the software. Let me show you what I mean. In the effects panel, go and search for gunfire. Under the particles and simulation, you will see a gunfire effect. Drag this effect as a new layer into your composite shot. Note that you will be asked if you want to add a camera. Since the gunfire effect in HitFilm 2 is a generated 3D effect, you require a camera to view it properly. So simply click yes. The gunfire layer and a new camera have been added to your shot. Let's disable the base footage so I can show you the gunfire effect in more detail. While this looks like your standard side-on muzzle flash stock footage, this muzzle flash is actually generated using the particle system in HitFilm 2. What this means is that you can move the camera around in your scene and when you orbit around the muzzle flash, you can see that it is fully 3D and volumetric. This is great because it allows you to place your gunfire effect accurately in your scene since you can just rotate it to fit the aim of the gun no matter where it is pointed at. If you do not like the look of your muzzle flash, HitFilm 2 gives you lots of parameters that you can tweak to customize it to fit your scene and your style. Select the gunfire layer and then go over to the controls panel. Here you can see and edit all the properties of the layer grouped into categories. Open up the Appearance tab. Go over to the Color property and click on the Color Picker. Let's change the color to something a little bit more saturated, like this red. Immediately your gunfire effect is colored red. I'll just undo that for now. Note that there's an active flag under the Appearance group that enables or disables the visibility of the effect. We will animate this property in a little bit to create a machine gun muzzle flash effect. Now HitFilm 2 also exposes something called Rate of Fire. To be honest, I found this property not very useful. It specifies the percentage of frames for which the muzzle flash will be visible. Right now, the muzzle flash is visible throughout the entire shot 100% of the time. If we lower the rate of fire, you can see that the gunfire comes in and out, almost looking like repeat fire. However, Rate of Fire does not let you control for how long the muzzle flash is visible each time, which means you end up with sections where the effect will hang around for quite a number of consecutive frames. And gunfire should only ever be visible for a single frame before it disappears. Anyways, let's move on to the core flare settings. The core flare is the center element of your gunfire effect and there's a ton of properties that you can change here. I will not go over all of these in detail, just play around with them and see what they do. Scale is a pretty obvious one. Barrel gap shifts the flare away from the center of the effect and the length property, I hope I don't have to explain that one. One property I really liked having exposed is the number of particles used for the flare. If you increase this property, your gunfire flare becomes more intense and solid. Now this gives you options to turn the muzzle flash into something entirely different, like a laser beam. Let's stretch the flare out a little more and reposition the camera so we can see what we are doing. Then increase the number of particles to make the gunfire flare look nice and solid. Reduce the length taper to zero and increase the radius taper to 100%. Now bring down the radius until you have a nice solid beam shape. Finally, in the appearance tab, change the color to anything you want, like a nice electric blue. Bam! We have a cool 3D laser beam effect. 
But let's undo all of that and return to the basic gunfire effect. One last thing I want to show you before we create our machine gun fire is the side flares properties. I will zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Untick the active property of the core flare so only the side flares of the gunfire effect are visible. Then open up the side flares tab. The side flares are the little flares that are coming out of the side of the gun, usually around the nozzle and as with the core flare you have full control over them. Increase the number of particles to make the side flares nice and easy to see. There, now the shape of the side flares is much more obvious. Again, I won't go through all of these properties. I recommend you just play around with them and get a bit more familiar with what they do. There are some cool ones in here like rotation and the number of flares to match up with the type of gun prop you're using in your footage. Just have fun and experiment. Now let's finally add some muzzle flashes to our footage. First, reset your camera by selecting Reset Camera View from this drop-down menu. Then select and delete the gunfire layer. Finally, enable the base footage layer again. Go back to the effects panel and search for gun. HitFilm 2 does contain a large number of preset effects that you can simply drag onto your clips and tweak to your liking. The one we will be using is the Tommy Gun Daylight effect. Drag the effect into your composite shot as a new layer. This does look pretty cool already, but I want to tweak it to make it a little bit more pointy and tight. For this, I will reposition the muzzle flash a little bit just so we can see what we are doing. Now go over to the core flare properties in the controls panel. First, increase the number of particles used a little bit just to make the core flare look a little bit more intense. Then bring down the radius taper to around 50% to make the effect look a little bit more pointy. Finally, adjust the length of the flare to fit your scene. Actually, I think I will bump up the radius by just a little bit as well. Nice, I like it. Let's have a look at the side flares. Open up the side flares tab. Again, begin by increasing the number of particles used to make them a little bit more solid. In my opinion, the side flares are much too large, so scale them down a little bit. They are also a little bit too long, so decrease the length to match your scene. Actually, now they've gotten a little bit fat, so I will further reduce the scale. Feel free to tweak these parameters to your liking. How you want your muzzle flash to look in the end is absolutely up to you. Lastly, I will increase the number of side flares to two. One on the top and one on the bottom of the muzzle. We're done with the setup. Time to place our muzzle flash correctly in the scene. Use the position arrows to move the muzzle flash effect to the correct spot at the tip of your gun. You can use these little handles to rotate your gunfire effect in 3D space to match up with the aim of your gun. Hmm, let's quickly tweak the muzzle flash a tiny bit more. I will reduce the barrel gap for the core flare to bring the main muzzle flash a little bit closer in. I will also reduce the scale as well as the length of the side flares to sit a little bit more tightly on the AK-47. Reposition the muzzle flash if required. I will position it so it appears that the side flares are coming out just at the tip of the gun. Now it's time to animate a muzzle flash. This is an automatic rifle so you would expect it to shoot more than once. Remember how in the appearance tab for the gunfire effect we had an active property that enabled or disabled the entire effect? We will animate this property to show and hide the muzzle flash every 4 frames to simulate the machine gun fire. To enable keyframes, just like in After Effects, click on the little icon on the left side of the active property. It will turn green, indicating that keyframes are enabled for this property. Since I am moving the gun around in this clip, we also want to animate the position and orientation of the gunfire effect. So open up the Transform Properties group and tick the circle next to the position and the orientation properties. Now move the timeline indicator one frame back. We want to disable our muzzle flash effect in this frame. If you scroll down in your layers panel, you will see all of the layers properties and little diamonds indicating where you already created keyframes. Scroll down to the appearance group and find the active property in the timeline. Then untick it. This will create a new keyframe where the muzzle flash is not visible. Moving forward one frame, you can see the muzzle flash reappears. Since we want it to last only a single frame, we will move one more frame forward and untick the active property for this frame. This will once again hide the muzzle flash. We only want our muzzle flash to become visible every couple of frames, repeating a number of times. While we can create all of these keyframes manually, you can also just move forward a few frames, select the keyframes you've already created and copy them. For this, simply select the keyframes you want to copy, right click them and then select copy. Then use Ctrl V to paste the keyframes at the current timeline position. Move through your entire clip and repeatedly paste the same set of keyframes onto the active property of the gunfire effect. Done. Next, since the gun is moving, 
We need to reposition the muzzle flash for every frame where it is visible. Remember, we already enabled keyframes for the position and the orientation properties. Now we simply have to go through our scene to visit all of the frames where the muzzle flash is visible and reposition the effect correctly at the tip of the gun. Since I'm also rotating the gun a little bit, we have to repeat the process and match up the rotation of the muzzle flash with the aim of the gun. The fact that the muzzle flash effect is fully 3D is very useful here, as you can rotate the gunfire effect any way you want to match it up with the position of your gun. Repeat this process throughout your entire scene. Nice! If you scroll back up in the timeline panel, you will see all of the keyframes we just created for the position and the orientation properties. Close all of the properties for the Tommy gun effect layer. If you scrub through your footage, you should have a nice looking muzzle flash effect coming out of the AK-47. Finally, let's create the lighting for the gunfire. For this, select the base footage and duplicate it by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate from the context menu. I will call this layer lighting. Move the lighting layer to the very top. Go over to the controls panel and under the layer properties, set the blend property to add. Now this will look way too bright, but we will change that in a moment. For now, we want to add masks to define which areas of the scene are affected by the light. You can really go to town on this and create detailed individual masks for different parts of your scene, but to keep things simple, I will just create a simple elliptical mask around the main part of my scene. Make sure the lighting layer is selected and then click on the ellipse mask tool. Drag over the preview window to create a nice mask around the muzzle flash effect. Back in the layers window, you can see the new mask applied to the layer. Open up the mask properties and increase the feather strength to a few hundred to blend the edges of the mask out nicely. I will also bring in the expansion a little to narrow down the radius of the mask. Now, aside from being much too bright, the lighting is also much too white. Let's tint the layer a little bit yellow. For this, search for the levels histogram effect in the effects panel and then apply it to the lighting layer. Over in the controls panel, under effects, you will now see the levels histogram applied. Expand the effect parameters and go over to the red channel. Bring up the red gain to add some red into your lighting layer. Then go over to the green channel. Now bring up the green gain to give the layer a nice yellow tint. That should do. I actually think the lighting looks a little bit too flat, so go search for the brightness and contrast effect and apply it to the lighting layer. Open up the effect properties and jack up the contrast to make the muzzle flash lighting pop a little bit more. That looks much better. Now the very last thing for us to do is to animate the opacity of the lighting layer. Move to the frame just before the first shot is fired. In the layer properties, expand the transform tab. Click on the circle next to the opacity property to enable keyframes for it and set it to zero. Move forward one frame. Bam! The muzzle flash is visible, so we'd expect some lighting to strike the scene. So increase the opacity of the lighting layer to somewhere around 30 to 50%. Then move forward another two frames and bring the opacity back to zero. This will give you a nice looking flash of light when the AK-47 fires. Continue adding keyframes for maybe two or three more muzzle flashes manually with different maximum opacity values. You can simply copy the same set of keyframes, but I like to vary their intensity just a little bit. Once you have a handful of lighting flashes set up, just copy and paste the keyframes to add lighting to every single muzzle flash you have in your scene. Be sure to delete any keyframes and leave the lighting layer disabled after the gun has stopped firing. I will delete these last few keyframes here. Scrubbing through the footage, it does look really nice, but let's quickly export this composite shot to see the final effect. Simply hop over to the export tab in HitFilm 2 and from the timeline dropdown, select the composite shot you want to export. My composite shot was called Tutorial. Simply click on Export and select the location where you want your file to be saved. A few seconds or minutes later, depending on the length of your scene and the power of your computer, you should have a video file on your hard drive with your completed effect. And that is how we create gunfire effects in HitFilm 2. So what do you think? Did you enjoy the tutorial? Do let me know in the section below if you would like to see some more cool stuff that you can do with HitFilm 2. For me personally, I really enjoy the idea of having all my editing and my visual effects tools combined in the same software package. I did however encounter significant performance issues working with the video files that came straight out of my Nikon and my Canon DSLR. The customer support at FX Home told me that there are certain QuickTime compressions that HitFilm 2 does struggle to work with and those files might have to be converted to a different video format first. I recommend download the trial first, make sure it works with your files and that you actually enjoy using the tool before you commit to buy. 
I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe, hit that like button, share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And if you're hungry for more, you can always find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.